What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 8 video. If you don't know, Players' Cup 3 was this past weekend, and I qualified, and I brought an Appleton team. For the next couple of videos, I'm actually going to be post-comming my matches. I originally intended to livestream these, but uh, I ended up just saying, you know what, I want to focus on the game, I'm going to post-com it. So, I ended up bringing this Appleton team, I'll do a team report once we're through with all the matches at the end of the week. But my first round was versus Jack. Now, Jack ended up bringing uh, one of the tougher matchups that I had. Uh, he ended up having something that you don't really see too much in the format, which is Cinderace. Uh, and if I remember correctly, this is a White Herb Cinderace, so I wasn't actually able to intimidate it with my Incineroar on lead. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is the first time I've watched this match in a couple of days, so I kind of hardly remember what went on. <laughs> so I'm kind of just like remembering as I go. Uh, but... Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like, and then subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content now that my little hiatus is over. Uh, but yeah, back to the game. Uh, Lapras and Cinderace is actually kind of annoying for the team, uh, but I do have a bit of a game plan here. Um, basically, what I really want to do is get off my Trick Room and be able to sweep with Calyrex Ice once this Cinderace is down, because Cinderace is pretty annoying on lead. Uh, I guarantee you that... The Incineroar is going to be a pretty big help in the rest of this match. Uh, however, uh, with that White Herb, it is actually pretty annoying. If I remember correctly, too, this is a Life Orb Lapras. I don't have the team sheet open with me right now. This is kind of a very messy way to post con, but they end up leading off Cinderace and um, Umbreon, which the Umbreon did have Taunt, which is kind of a pain because Umbreon having the Inner Focus ability means that it's not able to be faked out. And my Intimidate on the Cinderace on the initial turn isn't going to mean too much beyond proccing the White Herb, uh, which will reset it. Yeah, there it is. So the White Herb will reset the attack drop back to normal. Uh, and here, I believe I end up just trying to go for the Trick Room regardless of the fact that... Um, the Cinderace is going to be attacking into me, and the fact that I'm likely to get taunted by the Umbreon. I figured, you know what, if... I didn't have anything I really wanted to switch into. Um, I kind of just had to go for it. Oh, did I end up switching out? I feel like if I went out into anything, it probably would have been Appleton here, but... Yeah. Let me think. By, by the way, I just want to... <laughs> yeah, I ended up going into Appleton. Uh, so I could actually go for another parting shot here. Now, the reason I did that uh, was because, like I said, the initial Intimidate didn't matter for too much. And I can definitely take a Max Knuckle if they decide to Dynamax, which is what I anticipate them doing here. Uh, and if they end up going for a Max Knuckle into the Appleton, it is really bulky. It's going to be able to eat that hit. Uh, and I'll be able to get this Parting Shot off, which is really useful for getting that down to a uh, neutral, not neutral, but minus one attack stat. And then I can also just cycle in the Incinera once again. I want to point out, though, that I had not practiced at all for this Player's Cup. And I ended up going a lot deeper than I expected to. Uh, <laughs> along with that, it was with an Appleton team. Uh, but they end up going for the Max Knuckle. I believe that is into my Incineroar here. Yeah, they go for it into the Incineroar because they recognize that it wouldn't be able to knock out the P2, and Taunt was their better play anyways. Uh, they knock me down into Figgy Berry range, I believe, here, and I am going to be able to get off this parting shot, but uh, something to note is Umbreon is faster than Incineroar naturally, and I ended up running a sassy negative speed nature Incineroar with zero speed IVs, which does make it so um, I'm always going to be under speeding Umbreon, which was kind of annoying in this match because... My game plan in the end game is eventually to get a taunt on the Umbreon, if not just outright remove it, which will allow me to actually go for my, um, actually go for my trick room later on in the game. So I have to taunt the taunt user, which is a little bit frustrating. <laughs> I end up getting the P2 in here. I'm fully expecting this thing to get taunted again, uh, but I know that there were a couple of matches where I said I know the taunt is obvious, but I have to go for it regardless. Uh, here I have my Appleton on the field. And I'm actually somewhat tempted to Dynamax here, because if I get my Incineroar back in, the Cinderace is going to have its attack stat brought back down to neutral. Uh, and I should be able to actually take a max Airstream. However, like I said, this is open team sheet, so my opponent would be able to tell that the weakness policy is on there, which would discourage them from going for the max Airstream, which I believe they don't actually go for the max Airstream here. I think they just max Knuckle once more. Uh, something to note is Cinderace has to go for Max Airstream to actually deal a significant amount of damage to my Appleton, since its strongest move, G-Max Fireball, is resisted because of Thick Fat. 
So I'll get my Incineroar in to lower the attack stat once more, this time without a white herb. Uh, it will actually be bringing that attack stat down after that previous max knuckle. And I do end up Dynamaxing the Appleton, just kind of hoping here that they would go for the uh, max Airstream play, because after that a max Wormwind would be doing a ton of damage. And at the very least, a max Wormwind will be able to lower the attack on the um, Cinderace. Appleton having a massive health pool Dynamaxing is actually something I completely forgot about. Uh, there's the Max Knuckle. They didn't want to proc my weakness policy. They definitely recognize that option there. And they do knock out my Incineroar, which I believe this thing is back down to neutral now because it was it. Uh, it Max Knuckled, I Parting Shotted, which brought it back down to neutral afterwards. And then I Intimidated, which brought it back down to neutral. <laughs> I forget what happened. Anyways, uh, the point is the Cinderace has at minimum a minus one attack set. I've forgotten at this point in the game. Uh, but uh, the Appleton isn't doing an insane amount of damage. It definitely isn't like my first choice when it comes to Dynamaxing versus this team. I would have much preferred to remove the Cinderace and end up Dynamaxing with the Calyrex. And it can, you can see here, I'm kind of like struggling here. I'm like, all right, what do I go with? Uh, at this point, I'm just kind of playing to see if I can get lucky. <laughs> I definitely have to get really lucky to win this first game. So I send in the P2. Get a little download boost, however they did EV in such a way where I get an attack boost instead of a special attack boost, so it's pretty useless. Um, my best play is definitely just to Wormwind again and try to Trick Room regardless of the fact that it's not going to work. <clears throat> Excuse me if I cough a little bit, I have a, a bit of a sore throat, which is why I haven't been recording too much lately. Uh, but I do try to Trick Room here regardless of the fact that a Taunt is likely to come out. I have to at least try is my thing. Another option I have uh, for getting up Trick Room is... If the Umbreon's on the field, I could always go for a double Trick Room with Calyrex and Porygon 2, which I did consider later on in the match, uh, because they can only taunt one of those Pokemon. Uh, and that's really useful. They do activate my Weakness Policy here. And I believe the Umbreon is just going to go for a Snarl here, which will pretty much cancel out the damage I could have been able to do. <clears throat> oh no, it did go for the Taunt. So, Taunt goes up. I'm not able to Trick Room. Uh, but I'm going to be doing a decent amount of damage with this Max Wormwind, which I believe knocks out the Cinderace from this range. Yeah, I'd be disappointed if it didn't. <clears throat> and I do pick up my first KO of the game. Uh, however, I'm at a significant... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty far behind here. I had to use my Dynamax on my Appleton, which isn't great, uh, all things considered. Appleton shakes off its Taunt, not that it matters too much, it just gains Protect again. Uh, and I'm not able to get off a Trick Room. Along with that, they still have their Restricted Pokemon in the back. And that isn't great. <laughs> that isn't great for me. Especially when it's Zacian. Uh, a, a matchup that is really common. And I kind of have to play really, really conservatively versus it. I do face a couple more Zacians uh, later on in this tournament. Lapdog was very present. Lapdog was really, really good. Uh, so, my best play is just to Max Worm win this Umbreon to lower the Zacian's attack stat. At this point, I've just accepted I've lost the first game. And in a double elimination tournament, that is pretty scary because <laughs> if I end up losing this whole match, uh, I'm already ranked down into loser's bracket, which extends my day. Uh, I only had to win five in a row to actually make it into day two, but uh, I, I ended up going three and two, spoilers. They knock out my Appleton before I'm able to attack. And with Calyrex Ice being my last Pokemon, I'm not really in a prime position to win here. Foul play will be doing actually a decent chunk considering I had an attack boost uh, because of my download. So uh, I'm going to go for this try attack and I believe I get like a freeze or something or a paralysis on the last turn. But I end up forfeiting or something because I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to play this out. <laughs> I'm not going to play this out. It's it's really pointless, especially with uh, open team sheets. There's like no information I can collect beyond speed tiers. So as you can see, everyone's too nervous to eat berries. Not that it really matters too much. Uh, and I do go for the Trick Room play here. I'm like, listen, one of these guys... Uh, I need the Trick Room my Calyrex. Like, that's my only out. Uh, maybe they'll predict a Protect for no reason. So I had to go for it. Playing to my outs. Uh, they do end up targeting down into the Calyrex, so I do lose this first match since there's absolutely no way a Porygon 2 is going to 3v1 in Umbreon, Lapras, and Azacian. There's the Yawn. Into the P2. And I go for my tri-attack. 
And I believe I get, yeah, there's the freeze. And at this point, I'm like, look, I understand that that might help a little bit, but it's not helping enough. And I end up just forfeiting on this next turn. So, yeah, we do forfeit here. It's really convenient that I played five games in total because that gives me five videos this week. That's pretty much what I'm going to be doing this week, but I will be live streaming as well. So I end up uh, losing game one to Jack, and they did instruct us to take screenshots of each result screen in case there was a dispute. So that's why you saw me take a screenshot there. Play with the same rules. Uh, at this point in the game, I'm strongly considering switching up my lead to better deal with the Cinderace because it did give me some issues. I think what I ended up doing was dropping Appleton for this match and going with Grimmsnarl or something like that. Um... I can't really remember, but uh, I, I, if you haven't noticed, I haven't remembered much about my first match. And it's a 44-minute match, so it's kind of a doozy. So here we are back into Team Preview. And I believe I still wanted to lead off Incineroar because that initial Intimidate is still good just for burning the White Herb. Uh, but I believe I go like Incineroar, Grimmsnarl. I definitely always bring P2 and Calyrex. I remember bringing Calyrex to every match here because Calyrex is just a, such a phenomenal Pokemon in this metagame. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm definitely thinking kind of hard here. You can tell that the Umbreon is kind of on my mind. Uh, I understand that Trick Room is essential to winning, especially versus a Zacian team. If I can't get up my Trick Room, I can't really beat Zacian effectively with a Calyrex. So I do end up leading off with Incineroar Grimmsnarl. And if I remember correctly, that's just to ensure I'm always able to take a uh, Max Knuckle or a High Jump Kick. Uh, from neutral because I get a reflect off and then I'm able to parting shot. So I did end up switching it up. I ended up going uh, Incineroar, Grimmsnarl, P2, and Calyrex Ice, which I think was the correct adjustment there. It ends up playing, it ends up paying off in dividends in this match, if I remember. But this match in particular was really close. Like this match was uh, one where it could have gone either way. So I was really grateful. Uh, that ended up getting to play a game three. And spoilers, uh, this <laughs> this match that still has a half hour left in it uh, has a game three. Post comming is definitely a whole different game than uh, live comming. I gotta say, I, I feel like I'm just like a really strange narrator. But point is, I like live comming a little bit better because there's more personality in it. Uh, we're here, I'm just kind of recalling a game. It's a little bit more, uh, I, I guess, like, my live comm stuff is more personality-driven, and my post comm stuff is more like, hey, this is what I did, uh, here's why I did it, here's why I'm bad at this game. <laughs> but as you can see, I end up getting Intimidate off here uh, to burn that wider and allow me to parting shot out, switch in the Incineroar. I recognize that Incineroar is going to be a very, very important player in this match when it comes to taunting the Umbreon or uh, intimidating the Cinderace or even intimidating the Zacian in the back. Uh, this team is very, very intimidate prone, and I have to take full advantage of that. So, uh, I end up going for the Reflect here, which is really useful in just making sure I have a lot of longevity on my Incineroar. I end up switching out right into the Porygon 2, because I know that I'll be able to take the hit behind a Reflect. Um, and I recognize that having as much health as possible on my Incineroar is going to be really important. And rather than going for a Parting Shot and taking a High Jump Kick or a Max Knuckle, uh, I'd rather just have Porygon take it since Porygon has reliable recovery. Um, and then I'll be able to cycle in the Incinerator to actually get a minus one on this Cinderace, which they end up going for the high jump kick, which is kind of smart of them. They definitely recognize that I expected an Intimidate, not an Intimidate, uh, a Dynamax right there. They go for a Yawn, which is kind of annoying. Uh, Grimmsnarl, by the way, in this matchup is really useful for beating down the Umbreon. I recognize that because Spirit Break will be doing a solid amount of damage since it's a decently powerful stab move. Uh, I end up going for the Thunder Wave here, I believe. No, no, I end up switching into Incinerator. Or Calyrex? What was I doing here? I believe I end up going in Cinerone again. No, I went Calyrex. I forgot. Um, but I think what I did is I went for the Trick Room and tried to go Calyrex just in case. I wasn't paying attention for the past 10 seconds, if you couldn't notice. Uh, let's, see what, let's see what I ended up doing here. I can't remember how this match went entirely. Yeah, so I end up switching out into Calyrex Ice. Oh, I remember, I remember, because the foul play onto Grimmsnarl wouldn't make sense there, so I just decided to switch it in. Uh, since it was the least likely to actually take a hit, uh, it was more likely that they would go for a 
Um, it was more likely they would go for the Max Knuckle into the Porygon 2, so I wanted to get another Intimidate off. Now I remember. I completely I completely missed when I clicked the Incineroar switch, because I was like, wait, why wouldn't I just go Incineroar there? <laughs> so yeah, uh, I was preventing a sleep with my Grim Snarl, and I was also just trying to Intimidate them once more, which now they're at minus one, and because they didn't Dynamax turn one, they are technically behind in terms of the Intimidate versus Max Knuckle War, which is really useful, especially when you consider the fact that I reflect up for the next five to eight turns. Uh, which, yeah, that's that's going to be really, really huge for this match. They end up going for the Max Knuckle here, trying to catch up again. Uh, goes into the Incineroar, and I don't take too much damage. I could definitely take one more, even though it's at plus one, or at neutral at that point. And they go for the Taunt onto my Incineroar, which is actually really frustrating, because my play was actually going to be to Taunt the Umbreon there. Uh, I don't end up getting to do that in this match, I believe, uh, but uh, I end up switching out my Incineroar for the Grim Snarl here, which uh, is just going to allow me to intimidate a little bit more safely, not have to worry about taking another Max Knuckle just so I can get a parting shot off. I'd rather just cycle a little bit more, uh, and I end up switching out into the Grim Snarl once more. And I believe I end up going for Thunder Wave with Grim Snarl here, recognizing that I have to sort of just tilt the scales more in favor towards me, make it so there's a slight chance they can't move each turn. Just really, really like lean into luck for this game. Which isn't always great, but when you have such a when you have such a negative matchup versus a team, uh, this definitely wasn't something I expected to face. Like Umbreon I knew was a bad matchup, but Cinderace was not something I expected to face, so I have to lean heavily into uh, just tilting things in my favor here. Porygon 2 is able to take the hit. They go for a foul play uh, onto what was Calyrex Ice but is now P2. And I just barely survive. I end up going for the Thunder Wave here into the Cinderace. Because Cinderace is giving me the most issues. And I can actually get in the Incineroar now. And get another Intimidate off. And because they end up going for the G-Max Fireball. Uh, it made it so they're still behind in the Intimidate versus Max Knuckle War. Which is really, really nice for the rest of this game. I think that Fireball was actually really huge. They definitely doubled into that slot. Fully expecting me to Dynamax the Calyrex. But... Uh, I didn't end up doing that, so it <laughs> played out in my favor. Uh, I get a Paralysis on the Cinderace. They go for a Max Knuckle uh, into what is going to be the P2, I believe, or it might have even been the Grim Snarl, because I think they just wanted to foul play P2. Yeah, so they end up going for the Grim Snarl, Max Knuckle, and they're just going to foul play what was P2, but is now the Incineroar, so it's not going to be doing a terrible amount of damage. And there it is. So at this point, uh, I've effectively stalled out their Dynamax and actually did a solid job of just making sure I didn't lose any pieces until that was over. Uh, I At this point, I'm mostly concerned with dealing with the Umbreon, and I really don't want it to recover, so uh, it's finally my opportunity to go for a taunt into the Umbreon. Uh, they were probably expecting a fake out into Cinderace or something along the lines of that. Uh, so they go for the high jump kick, and I actually get really lucky here. I They avoid, or they miss the high jump kick. Uh, and that was really huge for the rest of the game. This game saved me and allowed me to play a lot better in Game 3. Spirit Break goes into the Umbreon, doing a decent chunk of damage. Along with that, the Taunt will make it so they aren't able to click Moonlight. Uh, and at this point, Cinderace isn't looking too great because it did take a lot of damage there. Uh, and I am probably going to be able to take a high jump kick from this range still. Because I am behind a Reflect and they are at minus one, I think. I kind of forget what I did here. I think what I ended up doing was... I think I just Spirit Broke again? Yeah. No, no, no. I think this might have been the turn I Thunder Waved and Taunted to make sure I outsped. Or did I Taunt already? Yeah, I Taunted. <laughs> so, uh, I end up going into Calyrex here. And I go P2. And this was more or less a sack on P2. Just so I could get back in the Incineroar again. Because I expected a high jump kick into Incineroar. And in comes P2. With no way of actually taunting me, and me probably being able to bring in the Incineroar again, this is actually going to be a really nice turn to get the Trick Room off finally. But I do have to be really careful. A foul play from the Umbreon is devastating. Uh, and they have very few options, so here they end up are they end up being able to get the foul play off. Luckily, that Reflect actually helped quite a bit. Um, 
I end up getting in the Grim Snarl here. I think this is the turn that I really went for luck-based stuff. I like Thunder Wave. No, no. I remember. I remember. Uh, I ended up misclicking the Thunder Wave into the Umbreon when I meant to Spirit Break and just hope for the best. Uh, but <laughs> it didn't work out. It ended up working out, right? So I meant to Spirit Break the Umbreon uh, because Prankster obviously wouldn't actually affect the Umbreon. Uh, but... I got, I, it was weird, like, this one turn just happened to work out in my favor when I didn't mean to do that. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered anyways, actually, now that I think about it. They just happened to switch out the Umbreon, probably fully expecting me to go for a Spirit Break or a Glacial Lance or something, since, uh, Calyrex actually speed ties with Umbreon, since they're both 65. I go for the Thunder Wave, and it catches the Raichu. Them not foul playing was actually really big. And they go for the High Jump Kick into the Calyrex, expecting me to bring in the Incineroar, I believe. And I get my Trick Room off, yeah. And now, I'm actually not at all in a bad spot. Um, I have... I mean, like, I still have three of my Pokemon. I haven't Dynamaxed yet. I have to lean really heavily into the Dynamax to win. And there were a couple of really iffy turns here where it came down to just making a good call. I was tempted just to Glacial Lance and hope it wasn't going to go for a Fake Out into my Calyrex. Um... And I believe I did do that here. I was just like, listen, if they don't... Oh, no, I protected to try to call the fake out. Because even though I was perfectly capable of just going for the Glacial Lance there, I was concerned that they would expect me to do that. Uh, Sucker Punch was on the team sheet too, though, so that also lets me uh, stall out that. Uh, and now I believe I Dynamax and go for the Max Hail Storm into the Raichu. And go for a Reflect to make it so I can actually eat the Sucker Punch. No, 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 I went for it into the Cinderace. Uh, since the Cinderace is now Dark-type, I'm actually able to Max Hailstorm and break a Sash on a Raichu. So I Dynamax here. With double HP and Reflect Up, I expected them to Sucker Punch, and I would just probably barely live from that range. Yeah, 92 HP. That's going to be a close one. Uh, but if I remember correctly, they actually don't Sucker Punch here. Get my Reflect off. And I get my Max Hailstorm off. Which will knock out the Cinderace and actually give me a Chilling Nay boost, which is really useful for the rest of the game. And here's where the iffy stuff comes in. The Zacian's about to come in here. Uh, and I had to make a call on if they protected or if they uh, just attacked. And I, I remember this play. Uh, the Zacian ends up not attacking, and they end up going for a Sing and missing. The Zacian ends up not attacking at all. Or no, it, it does attack, I'm sorry. The Zacian ends up attacking when I expected not to attack, so I pretty much throw away my Calyrex and trade it for a Raichu when I could have had a much better trade just trying to KO the uh, Zacian there. So they're thinking, they're thinking, they're like, what do I bring in? Zacian is a pretty good play, uh, because it puts a lot of pressure on me to target into it, and I fully expected them to lead into that. I thought they would send in the Zacian, go for the Protect, and knock out my Calyrex with like a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch or something. Since I did take some Life Orb damage there, but I guess it would have been close. Uh, I, You can see, like, right here, I'm taking my time, like, do I... Do I max Hailstorm the Raichu? Do I max Quake the Raichu? Do I max Quake the Zacian? What do I do here? Uh, and you can see I end up going for the max Quake into the Raichu, I believe. Um, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I just... I need to Spirit Break the Raichu because... I don't know. Like, I just, I just want to play it safe. Like, I was playing it very safe here, but I fully expected them to protect the Zacian. And they end up not doing that. I end up losing the Calyrex. Because Zacian had Protect, Substitute, Sacred Sword, and uh, Behemoth Blade. So I was like, yeah, they got to Protect here. They did not. Uh, Chilling Nay, plus two. But it would have made a lot more sense just to go into the Zacian. Hindsight's 20 20, though, you know. I do a decent amount for a resisted move. And at this point, the match is uncomfortably close. <laughs> Behemoth Blade is obviously going to be able to knock me out at plus one when I'm Dynamaxed with Calyrex Ice at like no HP. So there it is, Calyrex Ice goes down. Uh, and what was a very, very 
a, a very good opportunity for me to like just sweep the rest of the game. I kind of throw there, uh, and now it's become a very close game where I need to really, really hope that uh, my Pokemon's bulk is going to save me here. And I mean, when you run zero speed in Cinderor, you do get a little bit more that you can invest into bulk, which ended up coming in clutch here. You're going to see it in a minute. There's the Umbreon. Between Umbreon and Zacian, this is actually a really interesting field uh, because Grimmsnarl can obviously target into the Umbreon and win in the end, where Zacian is going to be able to possibly go for a Sacred Sword after it protects this final turn of Trick Room. Uh, here, I have I, I pretty much have to fake out the Zacian. Oh no, I Flare Blitzed because it didn't matter in the end. Yeah, because um, by faking out into the Zacian, I end up throwing away a turn of Trick Room. So I Flare Blitz into the Zacian because it's the last turn of Trick Room and I would have gone first anyways. They protect. I have pretty much no attack investment on this Incineroar. So I, I had no idea if it would actually KO from that range. But at the very least with Hail Damage, it'd come close. Spirit Break does a solid chunk to Umbreon. Uh, brings it down pretty low. However, Umbreon does still have access to Moonlight. And it does have that Citrus Berry. There's the Taunt. Goes off into the Grim Snarl, uh, so they can prevent me from going for a Thunder Wave into the Zacian here. Since Thunder Wave would have probably been my play, Thunder Wave probably would have been my best play there to make sure I could possibly actually get a Flare Blitz off. Uh, and everyone takes some Hail Damage here, bringing it a little bit lower, making me a little bit more confident I can knock out the Zacian. And with Reflect Up and Zacian at neutral, and them running Sacred Sword over close combat, this is going to be a very, very close end game. As you can see, I'm not confident my Incinera's ability to actually knock out the Zacian, so I double into it. Just in case it comes really close, the Spirit Break will be able to knock it out. So there it is, here's the Sacred Sword into the Incineroar, and it hangs on with 4 health. And I still have my Figgy Berry, so I get to keep my Incineroar for the rest of the match. That also means that a Flare Blitz is going to go off into this Zacian and likely knock it out. They even doubled just in case they couldn't quite pick up the KO, but uh, I do survive that anyways. I go for the Spirit Break to bring it down a little bit lower. And now I go for my Flare Blitz to try to KO the Zacian. And it does actually KO, so at this point, uh, I pretty much won the match. I pretty much won the match because my play is always to taunt into this Umbreon and go for Spirit Breaks until it drops, since Umbreon's only recovery is Moonlight at this point. And there is Hail blocking the recovery a little bit. I'm not sure how many more turns the Hail's up, uh, but if you don't know Moonlight's mechanics, if the sun is obscured, you actually don't get quite as much health. So they go for the Moonlight. They're only going to recover, what is it, like 30% instead of 50? 25%. Yeah, that was like 25%. Uh, so, Spirit Break. And they were honestly in range of Flare Blitz right there, but I go for the Taunt just because I'm like, I don't know. I just, I wanted to make sure I didn't get Moonlight stalled out because I only have so many Spirit Breaks I can click. And the Sun is no longer obscured, so Moonlight would actually heal 50% there. So, I think I did make the right call. Well, not really. It didn't really matter because Flare Blitz would have KO'd anyways. Uh, but I end up winning the second game just by the skin of my teeth. It, ends up, it was so close, man. It was so close. I do recognize, though, by the end of this match that this is the team I need to bring to this matchup. Grim Snarl and Cinnaroar, Calyrex Ice, Porygon 2. But I need to play it better. So first game was trial and error. You know, messing up, bringing Appleton when I really shouldn't have. Uh, second game was bringing the right team and just kind of barely squeezing in a win. A little bit of luck on my side. And the third game is where I have to play perfect. I have to play this game perfect. I need to know exactly what I'm doing. I have to adjust. So we play with the same rules. Uh, and at this point, I'm just like, listen, Marcos, get your act together. <laughs> like I said, I didn't expect to face any Cinderace in this tournament. And my first matchup is a Cinderace, which I did not know was a bad matchup. And now I need to play really well. So, we're about to enter team preview here. Um, like I said, I do recognize that I have to bring the Grim Snarl and the Incineroar in lead, get up that Reflect as soon as possible. Uh, but if I can get Trick Room up earlier and take more advantage of it, make more correct plays, uh, instead of playing so conservatively under my only opportunity to win, uh, I will be able to pick up a win. 
That that's what I'm thinking right here. Because that previous game showed me that I shouldn't be afraid to target into the Zacian. I should definitely be prioritizing it regardless of if I think it's going to protect. Because I still get something out of that. I still get some damage making it more comfortable for Incinera to knock it out. And at this point I'm just like, listen, Margos, do you adjust? Do you do something crazy? Do you bring the, the Thunderous for no reason? I, I remember saying that I was like, do I bring my Thunderous? I don't think I bring my Thunderous ever. <laughs> so uh, I end up going with uh, the exact same lead as before. And I believe my opponent switches it up here. I believe they end up leading off Lapras, trying to catch me off guard. Yeah, so they end up leading off Lapras Umbreon. Which I'm not sure if I agree with it. The Incineroar, not the Incineroar, the uh, Cinderace lead was definitely a little bit more frustrating to deal with, but I feel much more comfortable with the Lapras lead, to be honest. Like, I know for a fact I can eat a hit from Life Orb Landris behind a light screen. So here, I just go for the parting shot on the Lapras. I know for a fact I can take it. The only way this goes wrong is if they taunt the Incineroar, which I don't believe is their first priority when it comes to taunting here. Not when there's a Grimmsnarl on the field. And Grimmsnarl actually does phenomenal against this lead. I am running a specially defensive Grimmsnarl. It's going to be able to eat these hits. It's going to be able to throw out Spirit Breaks to just neutralize the damage on the Lapras. And if they decide to Dynamax this early, I can just play super, super conservatively until the uh, screens run out. And then I'll be able to likely win if I can get the Trick Room off. Like I said, Umbreon is my main issue when it comes to getting off Trick Room since it is running Taunt. Uh, it makes it really frustrating to try to get that off. But my Incineroar isn't in too much danger of getting Taunted, uh, so I will be able to Taunt that Umbreon at some point in the match, I think, since there's no Cinderace on the field. Uh, Lapras is still a threat, but it's less of a threat in my opinion. So I get off my Light Screen, and the turn 1 actually goes really well for me. They end up prioritizing getting off a Resonance. Which I believe was them trying to predict my Incinero to switch out, when in reality I was just expecting to eat the hit and switch out. Uh, so I am going to be able to get off my parting shot here. And at minimal damage at that. They take some damage on their Lapras. The Life Orb is actually really nice for me. Uh, they go for the taunt. Oh no, they end up taunting my Incinero, now I remember. So... Yeah, that. This is where I started falling back on the uh, Spirit Breaks. So my Incinero has no business staying in anymore. I have to go P2. Um, and just go for a Spirit Break, because the Reflect is pretty useless at this point in the game. I need the Spirit Break to lower damage from Lapras. Did I Thunder Wave here? No, no, I Spirit Broke. I was like, why would I Thunder Wave there? I make some questionable plays, don't get me wrong. I'm not like the greatest player of all time, but I, I, I definitely didn't expect myself to Thunder Wave there. I was like, what would you even do with a Thunder Wave in this situation? Make the Lapras slower. Make it harder to win. <laughs> Under Trick Room, at least. So I do get an Attack Boost there. Uh, and they go for the Max Geyser. I believe this goes into Grimmsnarl? No, no, they go into P2, uh, trying to see if I would stay in with my Incinerar. Uh, what? I mean, like, regardless, uh, a Max Geyser is the best play after the Max Resonance, because your final move with the Max Geyser is going to have rain behind it, which is really useful. So they go for the Yawn here, and I'm going to Spirit Break this Lapras, greatly decreasing its damage, effectively making it so the rain boost doesn't exist for it. And now that I'm Yawned, I have a really interesting decision to make here. Do I go out into an Incineroar or uh, my Calyrex and just, you know, eat a hit? Or do I stay in and just allow myself to go to sleep? I have to choose between Grimmsnarl's uh, health or uh, some HP on a Pokemon. And I end up going Incineroar because I'm like, listen, behind a light screen at minus one, even with rain up, I'm going to eat the hit. I'm certain I'm going to eat the hit. Because Incineroar is Incineroar. He does not go down that easy. So I get a useless Intimidate off, even more useless on the Umbreon. As they go for a Max Geyser. Right into the Incineroar. And Incineroar is able to eat the hit. I do actually get to eat my Berry here, which is really, really nice. And now I have an interesting couple of turns ahead of me. They go for the Taunt onto my P2, completely preventing the Trick Room. But I end up calling that. I'm like, listen, I'm going to get taunted. I'm going to go for the try attack. Just get a little bit of damage on this Lapras. With the Life Orb on it, it's, you know, it's going to knock it out. It's going to knock itself out eventually, and I can just help with that, you know. Um, I go for another try attack here. 
and I, yeah, I end up going right back out into Grim Snarl because I'm concerned about my um, I'm concerned about my Incineroar's health here. Recognizing that the taunt is going to be really useful in the end game, and uh, Incineroar's health is going to be really nice for dealing with the Zacian, which we saw behind a reflect. Sacred Sword doesn't do nearly enough to two shot it. So, going to get the Incineroar out of here. Uh, Lapras, I'm not too concerned with. Lapras at certain points in a match, I believe once the Dynamax is over, you need to reposition Lapras um, in a way where, like, you know, you can get something in for free. You need to, like, get something in on the field that takes advantage of the screens. I feel like once Lapras's Dynamax ends, it becomes pretty useless to a match. Like here, the Hydro Pump at minus one with screens up in the rain. It does a solid amount, right? But that's a Hydro Pump with a Life Orb behind it. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is kind of just stall out and reposition in a way where I can taunt that Umbreon for free and end up getting off my Trick Room. I don't really remember what I do here. I believe I end up just going for the... Yeah, I end up switching out here, and I go for another Spirit Break. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, I Thunder Waved here. I Thunder Waved here, and I remember why. I remember why. Because Thunder Waving actually makes it a lot easier for me to Parting Shot the Lapras if I really need to. Which, honestly, I could have just Spirit Broke again, but... <laughs> this is just kind of me, like, thinking kind of out of... I, I, like, I don't have my thoughts in my head. The same thoughts I had when I was playing this match. I have no idea what I was thinking. Uh, but Thunder Wave goes off here. I think Spirit Break made a lot more sense, all things considered. They go for the Foul Play onto my Incineroar. And they go for a Thunder, which does connect. Oh, and I remember this turn. I was sitting in my chair. I was like, no para, no para, no para, no para. Because if I got paralyzed there, it was pretty much over. The Aurora Veil does wear off since it is Life Orb Aurora Veil and not Light Screen, or not Light Clay Aurora Veil. And now I'm able to taunt the Umbreon and get in the Porygon 2, which will make it really easy to get off the Trick Room. There are very few reasons for this Umbreon to taunt uh, into the Incineroar. So if I get this taunt off, uh, it's essentially game. In comes the Porygon 2. My greatest fear was that they would just randomly taunt the Grim Snarl there. And they go for the Foul Play. And I just barely hang on. I get my taunt off, and for the first time in this entire set, I get to click Trick Room pretty much for free. Incineroar does avoid the Hydro Pump. I don't know if it mattered too much. I was kind of expecting to lose my Incineroar there. Um, I, I wanted to get in the Calyrex for free, so I said, whatever, let's just parting shot that thing. Uh, and we'll go for the Trick Room here. And Umbreon does outspeed the Incineroar, which is why I had to parting shot. I couldn't just get it in for free. This also will help me avoid um, a Glacial... Not Glacial Lens. It'll help me avoid a Foul Play on this turn. Because if they did go for the Foul Play onto the Incineroar, uh, I'd be in trouble since Calyrex would take a ton of damage. There's the Foul Play. They knock me out. No Parting Shot for me. There's the Hydro Pump. Does pretty much nothing to Porygon 2, and I do have recovery on my side. Lapras looks like a free uh, a free boost. Like, it looks like a free Chilling Nay boost. I twist the dimensions, you know, set up the Trick Room, and finally in comes Calyrex. I finally found an opportunity where Calyrex can do it. So here, uh, I do still have to fear the Umbreon. Umbreon is definitely still annoying because a foul play will do a lot. But I know that if I Dynamax, I can eat the hit. So I end up Dynamaxing and going for a Max Hailstorm, which will do a ton of damage to Umbreon, like no doubt, but it's not going to one-shot. I end up doubling just to make it a little bit easier. In a perfect world, I'd be able to go for a Life Orb Glacial Lance and get plus two on this turn. But unfortunately, this was not a game where I could afford to risk that sort of thing. So I Dynamax right here, and I'm going to just go for this uh, Max Hailstorm onto the Umbreon. They go for the Freeze Dry onto the P2, likely just trying to fish for a Freeze to uh, make it so I can't recover. Go for the Max Hailstorm. And it does an 
absolutely insane amount of damage. Like, Umbreon's a very defensive Pokemon. They tend to be more specially defensive in this format, but even then, like, doing that much damage is kind of... ew, you know? And from there, I believe the... yeah, the Tri-Attack does knock it out. So I'm in a pretty good position. Their Dynamax has ended. I have a full health... Um, I have a full health Calyrex Ice, and I have two more turns of Dynamax. I feel really good in this position. Uh, because if the, if, if like the Raichu were to come in, I'd be able to max Quake and then the Hail would take care of it. If the Zacian were to come in, a max Quake would definitely KO with the Life Orb. Like they can always protect, right? But it just makes it easier to knock them out on the next turn. So here, uh, I believe I end up doubling into the Zacian. So uh, yeah, so I go for the max Quake and I think I still go for the Tri-Attack into it. Just in case. Because Zacian's a really bulky Pokemon. I have no idea if they're running like a ton of HP on this thing to make it so they can live this sort of hit. I have no idea. I'm just paranoid. And there wasn't really a reason not to. Lapras wasn't going to be an issue. This was pretty much the last problem Pokemon on my opponent's team. So here we go. They go for the freeze dry. Uh, and that's going to be doing pretty much nothing to the Porygon too. I don't get frozen, and the Lapras nearly knocks itself out uh, with the Life Orb. Max Quake is going to go off into the Zacian. It's a neutral Max Quake from the Calyrex Ice, but it is Life Orb boosted, so I am able to pick up the KO. And at this point, I'm feeling really good. I feel like there's no way I can lose this match. And yeah, no, I feel I feel really nice here. I would definitely say round one was my second hardest match this entire tournament my hardest match would be versus uh joseph ugarte like that man wiped the floor with me but we'll get to that when we get there i knock out the lapras and now it is a 3v1 with incineroar um no not with incineroar with uh grim snarl porygon 2 and the calyrex ice in comes the cinderace and this was really satisfying this was especially satisfying, because Cinderace had to be one of the most problematic Pokemon in this match. <laughs> so being able to max Quake it on the final turn of the game was just like, okay, finally, I can just get rid of this thing. They go for the Sucker Punch, uh, trying to take a piece from me, just one final piece to end the game. Uh, oh no, I thought they would go for it into the Porygon too. Uh, I guess they were just kind of fishing for a crit, and they did get it, funny enough, uh, but it wasn't nearly enough to KO. I remember there was one game where someone like sucker punched my P2 when I recovered. But yeah, I finally knock out the Cinderace and I win the set 2-1. to one. It was one of my hardest sets and I want to just give a shout out to Jack, my opponent here. Because he played phenomenally uh, and it was just really difficult and I know he watches the channel. So Jack, if you're watching this, shout out to you. Uh, thanks for watching the channel and thanks for playing me. But with that, I'm going to call it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications, because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And I will see you guys in the next one. I know this was a long one. Bye.